y'all. This is Jamie with Out of Bounds with Jamie and Abby, presented by Ashley. And on today's episode, we had Manit Shohan. She is a celebrity chef, judge on the Food Network show Chopped, and extraordinaire. She has yeah. three restaurants in Nashville, two cookbooks. I mean, the list goes on. We really enjoyed talking to her, and we hope you guys enjoy this episode. You know, one of the things that I did enjoy yeah. was watching you. Because I felt like this was really in your wheelhouse as far as Nashville Guru mm. and talking about the restaurants in town and knowing old Nashville versus new Nashville. So I really enjoyed that side of it, too, is watching you and your, it doing your stuff. That's sweet. I know it took like everything in me not to ask her 400 questions about <laughs> Nashville. I was like, OK, we'll talk about other stuff, too. <laughs> it was great. I feel like I'm a little bored tonight. Manit, thank you for being on today. We know how busy you are, and um, I think we caught you right before you started filming for Chopped. So thank we you appreciate for having it. me over here. Yes, and we have to mention that we're in Chohan, uh, one of Manit's restaurants in Nashville, and it's beautiful. It's um, so colorful. I know. I, I love absolutely it. love it. It just makes you happy it when does. you walk in. Yeah, it really does. Then we've done our job. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. It is beautiful in here. So we always kind of just like to start at the beginning, like what got you into cooking? Where did you grow up? You know, all the things. How to get to Nashville. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. How much time do we have? <laughs> I got into cooking because of a really simple reason. I loved eating, right? And I realized that when I wanted to enjoy the flavors that I liked, I had to cook it myself. So I grew up in this really small town in eastern India. It's called Ranchi. My dad, an engineer, and my mom, a principal of a school. So we grew up in a really, you know, like a very studious family. Everybody was studying. My sister was studying to be an engineer. So, so that was the mindset. But we also grew up in a community where there were people from all over India. So in Indian cuisine, each and every state has a very distinct cuisine of its own. So we were a predominantly northern Indian Punjabi household. Our neighbors were from southern India or eastern India. So I would finish dinner at home, go over to my neighbor's houses, tell them that my parents hadn't fed me. Stop. And oh, yes, <laughs> they are mortified when they hear about it right now. But I would just sit at their dining table and just partake the meal with them. Oh. But slowly what became even more interesting for me was to go into the kitchen and, you know, uh, ask the aunties, you know, see how they were cooking and the ingredients they were using, the techniques, which was so different from, you know, uh, my household. But very later on, I realized that the reason why I really got into cooking was because it is one of the best communicators in the world, mm -hmm. right? Like one of our neighbors, she was from southern India and she didn't speak Hindi or English. She spoke Telugu, which is a southern Indian language. And I didn't know how to do that. But I would spend hours with her because oh. we would be cooking. And I realized that language, you do not require a language to communicate. It yeah. just needs to be that love of food and cooking. So when the entire, you know, all my classmates are starting to be doctors or engineers, I decided I want to be a chef. And there were so many unwanted, you know, people who came over and told my parents that, She's not that dumb. If she studies hard, she can be an engineer or oh, a doctor. No. Or oh. if you're really thinking outside the box, maybe an accountant. And my parents were like, back off. Yeah. Do whatever you want, but just make sure that you're the best at it. Because mediocrity is, you know, doesn't lead you to any, you know, anywhere. So that's what I did. Wow. About how old were you? This is, I think, right after college, so 16, 17. When you realized that this is what you wanted to yeah, do. Yeah, I uh, applied uh, for undergrad in India. I did my hotel management over there because at that time, per se, they weren't culinary schools in India. So you had to do hotel administration, the entire hotel management mm -hmm. gamut. And then once you got into the kitchen, then you decided, you know, what you wanted to specialize in, oh. which at that time, I'm like, why am I doing this yeah. now? As a restaurant owner, I so appreciate the fact that I know about accounting and, you know, marketing and legal and math. I hated <laughs> it so much, but now it's helpful. So that's it. And my final year of uh, my undergrad, I asked my one of my chef instructors, 
which was the best culinary institute in the world to go to and he said the CIA uh, culinary yes. institute of america okay. before you guys think i'm anything cooler than a chef <laughs> <laughs> and that's what i did applied came here and worked in philadelphia chicago new york and now nashville Wow. That's so amazing. So how was it coming here from India originally like to go to CIA? It was crazy yeah. because when I came from India, you know, this was the college that I came from was the coolest and all of us we thought we were really hip and mm-hmm. the in <laughs> thing. And when I reached CIA, which is gorgeous and ugh, I I started school in December January. Mm. So you can imagine how cold I had yes. never experienced that cold. <laughs> like I had shown up with skirts. <laughs> right? Let's let's talk, right? I'm like that's what it is. Yeah. But the crazy part was that I was the only Indian in, on campus for the majority of my time at CIA. And I realized that, you know, I'm not as cool as I think I am in my mm. mind because I just, you know, there are such uh, cultural differences that you yes. never, like I never laughed on SNL because I just didn't understand the humor, right? <laughs> uh, I yeah. don't laugh oh. to this day. <laughs> now I do. Now I do. <laughs> but it was, it was interesting. It. And, I, and to me also the whole thing was just the perception of Indian food. Mm-hmm. It was so warped. Like everybody thought that, oh, Indian food. Okay, eight ninety five, all you can eat buffet <laughs> with so much oil on top. And I'm like, but this is not the food that I grew up with. Like right. yeah. it's fresh, it's seasonal, it's three fresh meals a day. So I think that's when I I became very passionate about telling the world about Indian mm-hmm. food, about the beauty of Indian food, the history of Indian food. And I think that's what led me to right here. That's yes. amazing. So I read something this morning about you. That when you went to Chicago, you were the only female out of how many males? They up say for, it's around forty for yes. the executive chef in that position, and yeah. you and you did it. I think in the end of the day, being a chef is once you get into the kitchen, mm-hmm. y- you you know the gender goes out, mm-hmm. right? Because it is a very it's it's a difficult uh, field. But you've got to be so passionate about yeah. it, right? If you aren't, then you will not give your best. So yeah, it is. That, that's what is said. I did mm-hmm. not see those forty chefs. We weren't in an arena fighting with each uh, other. Though gotcha. I, you know, I would have. Still <laughs> you would have won. won anyway. <laughs> yeah, just saying. <laughs> but this was an, this was for an interview for an yes. executive chef yes. position. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's awesome though. And they probably wanted something different, right? Like when when you were doing that interview, I'm sure it was like, she's amazing. She's going to bring something to the table Mm -hmm. that these 40 males don't. I hope so. I think it's also once you get into the kitchen, there is that flexibility and adaptability that you need. You cannot be so stuck to, you know, recipes from, you know, the 1970s that you that you are afraid to evolve. So Mm -hmm. you have to evolve with the timings. Totally. Hmm. What is your favorite food? My favorite food personally to eat? Yes. Anything which is delicious. <laughs> Absolutely. Answer. Anything which is delicious. Favorite food to make? Yes. Anything my kids eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that. So you have two children, correct? Tell us Three. About. You forgot the husband. Oh, yes. yes. Three yes. children. Okay. Yes. Three. One grown one. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. <laughs> we have a seven-year-old son, Karma, who, who is the reason why we moved to Nashville, and an 11-year-old daughter, Shagun. Okay. Why did he have you moved to Nashville? So when we were opening this space, Chohan Elan Masala House, we started the construction almost, I think, 2000, end of 2012, 2013. It was supposed to be a six month project. We, because the building is so, so old, we discovered a lot of things along the way. So, so the project took a really long time. We were based out of New York. The plan was to commute from New York. Along the way, we, we found out we were expecting baby number two. The idea was opening the restaurant in November, you know, staying here for a month or so. And then I go back, have the baby, best laid plans, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Our son had different plans. <laughs> the day we opened the restaurant, Chohan Elan Masala House, November 18, 2014, our son decided to be born three months early. Oh, are you serious? Oh, wow. I wish I was joking. So he was born at five o'clock in the morning and we opened the restaurant at five o'clock in the evening. Stop. And, uh, and that was it. He was in the NICU at Centennial for three months. And wow. both oh Vivek and I, we looked at each other and we are like, if he's so adamant in being a Nashvilleian, yes. who are we to stop it? <laughs> so we went that. to New York, wrapped up our house, moved over here. And then we are like, okay, 
We're here now. Hello, yeah. Nashville. We've arrived. Now, how do we take this to the next level? <laughs> wow. That's cr- that's an incredible story, yeah. really. It is. It does make for an interesting story. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So after you opened this, how did Tanso and the Mockingbird come along? So it's, it's really interesting. When we opened this, like I was, you know, I was mentioning earlier, there was nothing around over here. It was not the cool place or the cool part of town to open the restaurant. But I think we had enough faith in our abilities that... We would be the people who would make it the cool place, right? Right beyond the walls, right over here, we had... It was a nightclub. I remember that. And they were wrapping up and we were like, okay, it's in the building. And people started telling us about the holes in the Nashville tapestry. So everybody's like, we need a good Chinese restaurant, like Mm -hmm. which is you know, Taoish or Hakka, uh, you know, Hakkasan, like something mm-hmm. which is upscale and fun. And that's how the idea of Tanso came about. Because Tanso, translated from Cantonese, it means uh, to explore. So that's what we wanted people to come here and explore. It's a gorgeous space. I think it's, it's so beautiful. And then I was judging on Chopped. And lo and behold, one of my old friends is competing. And I'm like, Oh my God, I go and tell the producers, I'm like, I know him and stuff. They're like, Manit, we know you, you're going to be very fair. Though there were parts when I was giving him, you know, um, negative feedback. I'm like, this, this relationship is not gonna last after this, oh, right? No. He won. And that's uh, Brian Regenbach, who is our executive chef and partner at Mockingbird. Oh, wow. And um, his husband, Mikey, and Mikey and I had started working together in Chicago ages back. So we have some, we've got embarrassing stories about each other, so we've got to stay close to each other. (laughs) But they were doing this really cool pop-up underground restaurant series in Chicago. So they were like, you know, we want to open a brick and mortar and we're like, come on over here, right? We'll open it for you. And that's how Mockingbird came about. That's amazing. You know, it's just the right time, the right place, mm-hmm. the right people, and things fall into place. Yes, and the, like the best three kind of restaurants are all together. And Absolutely. they're all so different that it works, you know, like kind of in the same building. And- uh, Vivek and I joke, it's like having kids, right? Yeah. The soul is the same, but each and every has such a different personality. Yes. So I mm-hmm. love it when I'm showing people the spaces, you know, first they go into Chohan and then you know, they walk into Tanso and transport it into a completely different place and then go into Mockingbird and they're like, what's happening here? <laughs> yes. It's so cool, though. I love it that. Is. It's a great trifecta. I know. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it is. Well, let's talk about Chopped. So how many years have you done the judging on Chopped? Dang, I think it's it's 12 to 13 years. Wow. Yeah. How did you, is that the first time you got started with Food Network? No, or how it, did was, that it was so interesting. People always ask me, they're like, you know, what is what was the route? What was the trajectory? Mm-hmm. And it just happened very organically. We had just opened, uh, you know, I was working at a restaurant in New York. And uh, our PR company put me in this, you know, Iron Chef. So I competed on Iron Chef against Chef Morimoto. And like the OG, right? Uh-huh. And I always love to say that I came a respectable second among two people. It's better than saying I last, <laughs> right? Um, and from there, they saw something that they liked and they invited me to do the the next Iron Chef series, which I th- I did I did pretty pretty good. And then from there, they invited me to be a guest judge on Chopped, and from there, a permanent judge on Chopped. That's so it amazing. Was just, it just evolved very naturally. Mm-hmm. Tell us about that. What is the experience like a day filming Chopped? Oh, wow. It is, it's really fun. Yeah. Uh, you know, I start a lot earlier around at six o'clock. There is hair and makeup, uh, et cetera. And we start rolling at eight o'clock. And it's fun. Every time I'm on the sets, it feels like, you know, you're going home for Thanksgiving because it's a (laughs) dysfunctional family. All of us judges are, you know, just pulling each other's leg. And then there is Ted who's trying to hold a sense of decorum. (laughs) Doesn't happen. There is a lot of that. But I think what is really amazing, especially with the old class, you know, the old class of the chop judges is that because we've been together for so long, we know each other's idiosyncrasies, right? Uh, But also we have such a deep respect for each other for what they get to the table. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because you can now hear that in the judging, you know, like, okay, oh, spices, Manit, you take it over. Oh, pasta, Scott, you talk (laughs) about it, right? So that's really fun. But it is a huge production. There was a time that I was... 
um, counting, especially the first round, because there are four chefs and they have to be a couple of cameras on each and every chef so that they don't miss anything. It's a huge production. Mm -hmm. But it has been like a lot of people have been there since day one. Right. Which mm -hmm. is which is incredible. So every time I go back on the sets, it's exciting because you meet old friends. I find it even more exciting because of the new ingredients that I get to learn about. You know, you do your homework about it. The the contestants do not know about the ingredients. They probably get two or three minutes from the time they've opened the basket. They've taken the things and it goes on top of the table and the baskets are removed. It's real time. Wow. Mm -hmm. There's never been in 12 years that extra time has been given for anything. Mm -hmm. um, that's what keeps the drama alive, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And I think that's that's the fun part about it. What's the most unique ingredient that you would say that has been opened? Because <laughs> some of the things that I, whenever I watch it, I'm like, what? I, eh. <laughs> 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 so recently I did an episode and um, it was an awful episode which was completely <laughs> awful and you right? have to eat it i've got to <laughs> eat it yes the first basket had um pig's uterus <laughs> Oh my. If you think that chitlins are <gasps> oh uh, are gosh. challenging oh my god <laughs> <laughs> right the second round had rooster testicle <gasps> soup. oh my god no second yeah no the Third round, I forgot. Like, I think it was Lutefisk or whatever. Like, it was Lutefisk sounded amazing after these first two rounds. So you can imagine, like, it is, it is, it's crazy. There like, was, I, there was a time I used to think that Balut was was the most challenging thing I'd ever had. I'm like, or before that, I used to think Rocky Mountain Oyster. I'm like, oh my God, Rocky Mountain Oyster, <laughs> gourmet compared oh. to this stuff. But th that's what it is, yes. I have to ask, though, was it actually delicious, the way they prepared, or nope. truly? Nope. nope. <laughs> <laughs> it, when, it was you know as gross Ted, as it sounds. When Ted says, you know, use a little or a lot, <laughs> yeah. if you don't know an ingredient, use a little. <laughs> Just a little. Don't embrace it don't give us Just big a... uterus fritters <laughs> <laughs> not gonna happen oh that's yes. so funny so funny yeah. you're just well, setting yourself up to being chopped <laughs> yes how many months do you film it's really interesting right now the filming is starting it's going to be around three months it depends on how many seasons we are doing so it's usually it's usually three months and it's um, it's interesting because there's so many uh, uh, judges, so we keep on rotating. Okay, so it's so kind you of just film all at once. It usually is. It's around uh, because you have the studio, you have the entire yeah. setup. So for three months, because when we are not filming, then everything is broken down and put into warehouses. Gotcha. So, so, so do you leave town? Now, you leave town for those three months, or do you? No, or I just back? based on the dates that I'm given. Okay. So it is, uh, you know, whatever dates I'm given, I fly mm. in a day before and I fly out after that. Okay. So yeah, so that's how it works. It's not too bad. Very no, busy. it's not. Yes, but it's two, like it's it's Ted who has the, you know, the, the heavy lifting because he's got to be there every day. We don't. Right. So how do your kids handle you being a celebrity? Do what they celebrity? know any difference? Do they know? Yeah, right. No, it's, it is it is what it is. That's that's what mommy works. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah. I mean, it is it's a completely different. I, I do have to keep on reminding them on a mm. regular basis to them. They, they've seen this since the time they've been born. So it's no different for them. It's not that it's happened, you know, recently that. Like I am still on uh, in awe of it because it's, you know, I always will be because mm -hmm. I didn't grow up with this. Right. It's it's something that I value. It's something that I cherish. But with the kids, they've kind of grown up with this. Right. That being said, they get uh, um, sermons from me on a very regular basis that this is not what life is. Mm -hmm. Right. I get them into the kitchen. I'm like, jump into, you know, the dish pit. You, you guys got to know everything. And oh my God, the tantrums is not even funny. But <laughs> but it is. I mean, it's really funny because, you know, I used to do these IGTV things and all, all. I would ask my daughter to join me. She now thinks that cooking means cooking in front of TV. Cooking yeah. doesn't mean like cooking for yourself. Yeah. yeah. So I've got to kind of like, okay, similar. <laughs> yeah. Similar down now. Yeah, yeah. That's not what life is. We still have to eat. I know. Exactly. <laughs> Three meals a day. Exactly. <laughs> do they have the ear talent? My daughter definitely has my talent of bullshitting. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. But I don't think either one. I, I mean, my daughter does, you know, she's very creative. So mm -hmm. she does like that 
the creativity when it comes to cooking but no nobody as like obsessed as me yeah. as in you know when it comes to eating yeah mm-hmm. it's so interesting these like junior chef shows Dang. i'm like these kids are 10 and they are cooking more than i could ever oh my cook gosh. it's impressive impressive they stand in front and what we have for you is a gastric <laughs> with a reduction i'm like I learned those words last year. Yeah. You are 10 years old. Yeah. You need a stool to stand up to the station. But it is it's incredible. The confidence and I I personally love judging kids as opposed to adults mm-hmm. only because the kids have not been uh, told the parameters, right? Mm-hmm. So the sky is the limit. They can do anything, yeah. right? We as, you know, we as trained chefs, we've been told, okay, reds go mm-hmm. with, you know, red wine, white goes with white. Like, and we think twice, we hesitate before we break those rules which mm-hmm. have been laid, uh, you know, for for centuries. Mm-hmm. These kids, they, they do whatever they want. They don't care. And that's when they create the most incredible flavor profiles like just blows your mind yeah have you ever taken a recipe that the kids have done maybe ideas but nothing that comes to mind like yeah. you know like they have they have these great ideas which you're like oh okay that's that's interesting i yeah. would have not thought of that yeah but uh, yeah yeah nothing nothing concrete that comes to yeah. mind yeah. yeah that's so cool do you find it's hard to criticize them I would, it would it would break my heart. I don't know if I could do it. I think being yeah. a mom, it's easier for me to do that. Okay. I, I think before I was a mom, it was much tougher. Yeah. But now because I do that with my kids all the time, yeah. there is a certain balance that you have to do in terms of what you did is fantastic. Mm-hmm. But this is how I would do it differently. I do it with the kids yeah. all the time. And and I mean, not that they take it yeah. uh, well, but <laughs> I mean, recently I did a Halloween baking episode and there was this kid who was so good. They were making this pie and she made um, a mask and uh, she baked it. And when she was transferring the mask onto the pie, the whole thing shattered <gasps> and she just lost it. Oh, oh no. And I was like... Oh, I'm like, I don't care if there are cameras in front of me. I, I went up to her. I'm like, that's okay. It's fine. It happens. It happens to me. It's happened to you. But you're not going to stop doing what yeah. you're doing because of this setback. And, and, and that, and I think those are the moments that are, those are the teaching moments, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because you've got to figure it out. It's crazy. Yesterday, last night, <laughs> I was, uh, I was watching, you know, the, the great British uh, baking show, the mm-hmm. kids yeah. edition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was looking at it and I'm looking at my husband. I'm like, look at the amount of pressure. Like that's that's a lot mm-hmm. to put on the kids. But it's also amazing to see how they thrive because they take it as a challenge and they're like, okay, I'm going to learn from this and I'm going to move on. Mm-hmm. They're so, so resilient. They yeah. are resilient. Yes. That's amazing. My poor kids. What? <laughs> they cook themselves chicken nuggets. <laughs> Fantastic. That's better than not cooking the uh, not cooking anything for themselves, That's right? True. Oh, That's true. <laughs> they need to do one of Manit's cooking classes <laughs> that she does. Are you still oh doing those gosh. a little uh, bit? We're going no? to we're going to start okay. soon. I think it was interesting during COVID we had to stop a lot of the yeah. things, right? And then the construction over here. So we are going to be starting it really soon and yeah. we're excited about that. Yeah. It was one of my favorite so what things is to it? do. I don't, I don't know about this. So um, uh, I used to do cooking classes. I used to call it Sunday school because okay. we used to do it for Sunday brunch. And uh, literally it started off at Chohan and then we moved to uh, Tanso. Uh, you know, we have around 30 people or so and they're divided into seven different teams. Mm-hmm. Each team gets a course to make and they make the food for the entire table. Oh, wow. Um, so, you know, I give them recipes. All the ingredients are there. So either they are working on the walk or you know making cocktails or desserts and then we all get to the table and then the spread is over there and everybody eats and drinks so and makes fun. merry yeah it's fun to me the favorite part was um how people would connect how friendships would be made uh-huh. because then i would you know somebody would meet to the cooking class and then i would be walking through the restaurant and they're like hey Manit, you remember we met at the cooking class Aww. so it was to me again Food is important to me yeah. because it's the world's biggest connector. Yeah, Absolutely. it's a big community. How do you do it all? You know, how do a mom, a wife, three restaurants, mm. the brewery? We haven't even talked about your beers because your Saffron IPA is like one of my favorite beers of all time. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> how do I do it all? I, I don't spend too much time analyzing or thinking if I can do it all. 
there is no other option right. you put one foot in front of the other and keep on walking ahead mm-hmm. i do think that a lot of times you hesitate or you falter when you pose the question to yourself can i mm-hmm. and this is you know this is interesting recently i i was talking to a group of women and i was telling them that we as women really second guess ourselves more often than not there'll be a job that you know a woman is really qualified for over qualified for and somebody asks them can you do it and there is a hesitation can i can mm. i do this right give the same job to a man who's probably never done it doesn't even know how to spell it and he'll be like yeah of course yes i can do it right <laughs> so i keep on telling you know women especially that we need to change our mindset mm-hmm. we need to keep those two words like you know can i question mark and just flip those words to i can mm-hmm. and as soon as it's in your mind you can do it mm-hmm. and that's what it's all about so half of the time it's the hesitation it's it's centuries and centuries of being you know questioned like you know not being given the due respect of being you know the equal sex like mm-hmm. those are the things that we've got to make sure that it doesn't carry on to the next generation absolutely yeah. i agree do you ever have like pinch me moments like wow look look where i'm at right now so often because i feel like i mean you're young and everything that you have accomplished i would imagine that you should have been like 60s or 70s you know i am 60 don't no, you know i'm just kidding <laughs> you're my age <laughs> <laughs> but you've accomplished so much in such a little amount of time it is i i mean i spent a lot of time like you know i was i was invited to the white house when mm-hmm. you know president obama was there and and we met them and i'm like i i uh took my mom and my sister along and it was just, it was a very proud moment because you know you you come um as an immigrant uh, you know with a few dollars in your pocket and then you're like wow wow <laughs> you know or or even at times when i see myself on television i'm like wow this is really happening yeah. or you know when i won the toc belt i i mean i still i still don't believe that i did but it is they are it's just an you know just an a collection of all of these moments that that at times take my bre- you mm-hmm. know takes my breath away that this is really happening yeah but the interesting part is and this is what i tell especially you know young kids who reach out to me and they're like we want to do what you're doing i keep on telling them that whenever you see people who are in front of camera or who who gotten a kind of you know recognition what you're seeing is only the tip of the iceberg right it's it's like the duck right like so serene but you know under the water they are and that's what you need to do you have to constantly be working to to maintain that to get the next to get the next opportunity because you know if if you just rest on the laurels of what you got yesterday you're not going to get opportunities tomorrow mm-hmm. so that's what it is you've got to just keep on keep on moving you're so right you're so right what are you what's in the works right now are you kind of just enjoying where you are and embracing that oh, where am i <laughs> <laughs> i i uh, listen one of the biggest things that i am working with myself uh is um is trying to figure out a sense of contentment right mm-hmm. i think that is one of the biggest things uh it's it's something that would make me very happy uh but also there is a big part of me which is afraid that if i'm content will i not work harder for the next thing so mm. there is that that balance mm-hmm. right so i'm trying to um uh, i try to find the beauty in in the everyday things in the in the everyday moments of life while i still am striving to move ahead um and i think the only thing that really worked for me is that the the moment i find myself in gets 150% of me right once that moment is gone i'm not going to dwell on it i'm going to mm-hmm. dwell on on the next moment and that's what has worked you know mm-hmm. because it's not fair for me to be in a moment and not give myself 
you know the f- you know the 120 the 150 percent of myself that's not fair so that's what that's what's work, uh, worked for me yeah. so yeah it is a lot of interesting things coming up there is a lot of filming happening there are a lot of festivals that i'm going to this itself is is amazing yeah uh, going to portugal for my cousin's wedding which i'm excited about oh, so right. yeah so we're going to portugal uh, yeah. this summer you, oh i cannot God. i've never been uh, nor have i i'm oh. so excited i'm so excited we're Some doing the, spain in portugal Cool. Oh my god you yeah. so some of the my best Vivek and my uh-huh. most memorable dining experience is on portuguese food in macau okay right we just walked into this place and it was just it's been around for like you know decades and it was so good and in india also goa is a, was a portuguese colony so whenever like even when i went to brazil just having that overlapping thing yeah. is amazing mhm wow That's fun. Well, I do want to touch on Nashville because I do Nashville Guru and it's my biggest interest. It's a baby. It's yeah, I'm like <laughs> Which by the way, I I don't know how you guys do it like the, the <laughs> photography and the narration is so it's it's incredible. It's one of my favorites. Oh, around well, thank over here. you. Thank yeah. you. We love doing it. But I I do see Nashville changing and you've had show on since 2014. 14. So you've really seen a lot of shifting as well in the last 8 years. I'm just interested to chat through that a little bit. I think you know, from my perspective it used to be so local. Like you, I would people would say where should I go and I had my top 5 places and now it's like, well what do you want and do you want to go local or do you want to go from like the big developers? And so there's so much changing. We see the construction outside and so I just like want your perspective on Nashville. You know it's it's really interesting it's a, it's a it's a two-edged sword right for a city to really grow it needs people to come right over here um and I am um, on the CVC uh, board right so it is it's always I mean I fell in Nashville at first landing when I came mm. over here and literally when I got a call I was getting calls from all over the country would you like to open something in San Francisco Seattle Houston like the obvious cities mm-hmm. where you think would support Indian food and then I get a call would you you know like to open something in Nashville and both Vivek and I looked at each other we were like Nashville, Nashville? Right. <laughs> what Why? this is before yeah. Nashville was cool yes. right so uh, but we're also the kind of people who explore each and every opportunity that comes our way so literally rolled up our sleeves and flew down over here and we fell in love mm-hmm. with um the soul of the city mm-hmm. right it is uh, i i very strongly believe that Nashville is the music city as much as because of the musicians as for the audience mm-hmm. because it's the audience that makes the musicians right right and i feel the same with food it's the audience that makes this a foodie city mm-hmm. right because there is a demand there are people coming over here and opening places so so there is a lot of that going on and it's exciting to be a part of that like i almost say that we were well ahead of the curve when you know everybody's like oh no sure let's let's go there so i mean like right now you heard about locust and food and wine magazine yes. right the best mm-hmm. restaurant which is incredible just to have that honor for us in Nashville to own that yes. is is incredible um i i do think that there always are those teething problems which the city is facing be it construction be it you know parking be mm-hmm. it i mean when we had opened chohan um valet parking was taken for granted now we can't even think about it because there's no place to yeah. go and park wasn't right? that a parking lot across the street there was it one was. here there was one there, there i mean it, it's it's yeah, yeah that's where i used to park when i came <laughs> exactly. here it was so easy <laughs> it was so easy and yeah. like even with our team members right like right now they've got to because of the construction they've got to go and park under the bridge and i get really scared in the evenings yeah. when they have to walk there them by themselves and i'm like somebody needs to escort them like they're not going mm-hmm. there by themselves so it's it's um it's interesting it is you know growing city problems uh and i mean the construction that we've been surrounded with we've been surrounded with pretty much since the time we opened mm-hmm. yeah. and it is like you guys can see the <laughs> yeah the, the roads, roads shut over down here, <laughs> there is not a single road that can that uh, that any of our restaurants have direct access to mm-hmm. which affects the business i, I mean be it that. uber be it you know like people can't just drive in and and stuff we are lucky that we have a really f- loyal following so mm-hmm. so we do do get you know um 
people uh, who are coming constantly despite the construction but i i do think that uh, you know when a city is it's usually the the, the mid level businesses it's the small businesses mm-hmm. like us which which get affected the most mm-hmm. because it is it's not the big businesses because they you know so much money they have there, so much yeah. money put one foot in front of the other mm-hmm. it is it's the small businesses who get really affected so i do think that there needs to be some some sort of platform where this is addressed mm, be right. it you know tax breaks be be it whatever at right. least let the city show that they are concerned about mm-hmm. businesses who've been around for some time otherwise businesses just get you know run yeah. out of any place yeah. absolutely well and the other thing i see on a different note other than construction and those troubles is like everyone wants the new shiny restaurant, right? Like we're constantly writing about new things and then everyone goes to that spot and then they're going to the next new spot. And so I do think it's hard for, I mean, you have a staple restaurants that are incredible, but I think that, I don't know if you feel the pressure, but from my end, it's like you guys have pressure to stay relevant. And so I didn't know if you had strategy around that or if you're just kind of like, we're solid, come, like we have our loyal following and that's it always has to be a combination of two things mm-hmm. right in a business you cannot uh, just um rely on on one strategy or one aspect it's constantly evolving so definitely we really appreciate the regulars they've been here since like they are people who come here who walked in the first day that we opened the doors right but then we have to also cultivate the new people who are coming right over here and um you know like me being on television that definitely helps yeah. right mm-hmm. that helps a lot with people coming from outside like the number of times i come over here and people are like oh my god you know we drove all the way from st louis to just meet you and we got to meet you and we were like if we are in town we've got to try one of manit's restaurants so th- that's that's incredible but also what we've created over here in these three three restaurants is something which is not generic right it is um it is like this is indian mm-hmm. it is this fusion it is still uh, you know accessible to people who've never had indian food right you can come and have nachos sitting at the bar but with indian flavors and you're like hey i didn't realize that indian flavors were so addictive right right or with tanso like you know with with the dumplings or mm. with the chinese food and the, and that ambiance it's very um, it, it's niche uh, or mockingbird mockingbird is the favorite for all the bachelorettes who come right over here it's like it's mm-hmm. mayhem and and crazy and we <laughs> we love it yeah. yeah so i think what we've created is we tried to create a niche market mm-hmm. and that was important for us and it took a lot of back and forth mm-hmm. right like this is too generic this is not going to work mm-hmm. oh okay let's this is how we're going to up our game so it's it's constant mm-hmm. right it's like we're constantly moving constantly figuring out new things new places absolutely i think a lot of them are so fantastic uh we we love it because we crave to go to new places right over here but also the fact is that um they people will go and try uh, a new place then just needs to be a follow through to that like right. you know mm-hmm. it might be beautiful and sparkling mm-hmm. um but there needs to be um something which is uh, which compels them to go back yeah. and yeah. i think what we've created over here compels people to come back yeah there's a soul here yes yeah for sure let's talk about your philanthropic efforts i think what is very important is to be a part of the community you have to be a part of a community you just can't just show up um and uh, over the years especially with restaurants uh, restaurants are definitely uh, approached a lot for uh, you know raising funds and stuff and we've always supported that be it larger organizations national organizations like march of dimes and which i do have a personal you know connection with mm. because i relate to that or um you know one gen away which uh, which uh, helps in fighting um food insecurity for middle tennessee but it is it's like pretty much you know safe haven mm-hmm. uh you name any of the local um you know charities we've always been a part of it but i think the one thing which i'm most proud of was during covid during covid that was a really difficult time for us in the for everybody but mm-hmm. especially for us in the industry because we almost thought that we were um almost on the front lines mm-hmm. right um I still remember seventeenth uh, of March when we let go of our entire team, two hundred and fifty people, and that was oh like gosh. it literally scarred us because Vivek and I, we've um, uh, you know worked so hard to right. to reach where we have, 
and to do that and the reason why we had to do it is to make sure that our our employees were you know in front of the line when it comes to unemployment mm-hmm. because we didn't know how long this would uh, this would last but after that we just reached out to all our vendors with all our perishable stuff there was a day um that our parking lot right next to mockingbird we had 660 cases of uh, food items which were delivered over there and we had the entire hospitality community come in help themselves mm-hmm. and uh, you know um just making sure that they are getting food and they all knew that if ever they needed anything there was always an open door um we also worked along with uh, the lee uh, initiative to go ahead and um the musicians uh, right like uh, a lot of people in this town they they travel mm-hmm. right they are technicians and musicians so once a week we were doing food for them they would come over there and pick up food for the week um so that's something that we did uh, the world central kitchen i'm very very involved with um it just is you know if you've been given something mm-hmm. then shame on you if you don't share it and yeah. that is a philosophy that Vivek and I hold very dear to our hearts so yeah so yeah. my husband and I are really big with JDRF and y'all actually supplied the food i think it was our second year that we had to do um our gala at home Yep. And so the mockingbird supplied it and I it was know. such a big hit. It is. It is. And like, the f- amount of food. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. Yeah. John and I came and I had my navigator and we pull up and it just kept coming. I and coming. I'm like, <laughs> we may not have room for this. It was so much food. It is. It's hilarious. I always I always laugh like we are like the quintessential Indian like the <laughs> Indian mom or grandma that Oh, you're full. Okay, try this. Keep eating. Right? Yeah. That's that's what it is. And it's it's uh, so funny. I'm actually doing um uh event uh, tomorrow. It's an online event at home tomorrow and um you know, the lady who's coming to organize the whole thing. We were on the phone yesterday and she was getting really she's like, "What else can I get? What else can I get?" I'm like, "Can you just get me one thing?" And she's like, "Yeah." I said, "Just bring an appetite." because there's going to be so much food <laughs> right so people like i did something for food and wine and i literally was packing boxes and giving it to i'm like yeah please take this with me oh my <laughs> like gosh. it's just i'm like i don't have enough room in the refrigerator so um i think to us food the quality and the quantity mm-hmm. of food just signifies the amount of love yeah. uh, that that we have That's for amazing. people around yeah So one year I was on Dancing with the Stars. Oh God, no! Or no And you were oh. my judge. <laughs> oh, I'd say for oh, safe, for safe haven. No, I don't. I've never judged it. You oh, never judged I've it. I've never judged it, but I've danced it. You've danced it. I've danced it. Were yes. you the year after you danced it? Were you supposed to judge it? I think I was supposed to judge it. Yeah, but That's I think was. I was supposed to. Uh, I was yeah. so nervous. Oh, I didn't God. know. I just knew you Bill, my out. hairdresser, was judging. That but I thought was, you were there. No, was it was. But I think I did. You must have seen the video of the previous year, uh-huh. which was incredible. This is like you know. <gasps> That was hard. It was crazy because this is this is again one of the. quintessential manit say mm-hmm. yes b- before knowing what she's saying yes to that's what <laughs> i did syndromes <laughs> that's right? what i did i literally i had one of our investors reach out they're like hey manit i'm on the board of um, safe haven uh, mm-hmm. you know would you like to participate of course i would right because i thought that there would be a table in front of me there'll be a table behind me i'll give everybody one ounce portion of tasting <laughs> but <laughs> boom done right and then three months before it they're like okay so we're having this uh, pre meeting and i'm like why do i need a pre meeting i've done so many of these <laughs> but because you know jerry had said it i i showed up and yeah. there is this guy comes running to me manita beg to be your partner oh i'm like oh, wait danny, danny that was mine that was danny yeah, oh so danny was th- mine that's too that's why yeah so i just remember and that i'm like i said uh maybe he's my sous chef who knows <laughs> right and then we are sitting over there in this like hall at safe haven yes. and they start the video last year i'm like holy <laughs> beep, 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 beep. <laughs> what did i say yes to you? and this is also the time when i was 50 pounds heavier right okay. and it was crazy and then we started and i'm like um let's say what i lack in grace i make up in enthusiasm <laughs> so i was like if i'm if i'm competing i need to win right so the shenanigans on the floor were were, were slightly That's uh, were slightly interesting like i'm like gliding on the floor <laughs> and i'm looking at the judges and winking at them <laughs> and then i like once we got 
like we put a lot of humor in it because that's who I am. Yeah. And after we finished, they are like, and the scores. I'm like, hold on. They're like, uh, excuse me, what's going on? Walked up to a table, grabbed a bottle of wine, and I chugged it. Oh right? my like, gosh! Now I you guys can it. talk, right? Yeah. One, one, one. The <laughs> the crowd favorite. Yes. So one way or the other, I, I told it. them yes. So oh. so that was it. You yes. won I with charm. Just, uh, at that point shenanigans. for me it was it was over it's done with I'm like I know I didn't win because it was not pretty but I was so happy it was it's done it's crazy like, I didn't my daughter's a dancer and I'm like do you do this every competition like do you go through these like I blacked out like literally I couldn't remember my dance I it was poor Danny. Oh my god, he is so sweet. His, he is. his patience was like incredible. But it is yeah, um it definitely is one of those things that I every year I tell myself I'll do something out of the comfort zone for me, yeah. right? And which is crazy because I on a daily basis do something which is out of comfort zone, right? Like get on a flight, go to Portland or this or that like yeah. it's crazy, but I I'm telling you that that public dancing is very yeah, that's up there. I agree. That's up there. I'm glad oh, yeah. I did it, but I don't know if I could do that again. <laughs> I know. They, they they've tried. They've tried a couple of times like would you come back? I'm like, "Uh, which day? Yeah, no, not in town." <laughs> Book something. I'll do it. Book something quick. I know. <laughs> Virtually, I'll do it. I'm like, I'll get on a flight just to just to just pretend to that I am on. Yeah, I am not here. So, That's hilarious. Um, Okay, I came up with two more questions because yes. you keep mentioning your husband, Vivek, and yes. what is his involvement in Morph Hospitality? Uh, he is Morph Hospitality. He is. Okay. So v- Vivek is, uh, he is the CEO of Morph Hospitality. Yeah. I always say that I, um, uh, you know, I'm the louder one, so I get more oxygen, but <laughs> he is the one who is making sure that everything is, like when we were talking about the duck, like I'm the the top part of the duck he's, he's down there he's the one who's making sure that the morph world goes around so yeah yeah what a great partnership mm. though it, it is it is it is a great partnership and also probably one of the stupidest things is to work with your <laughs> with your spouse yes i, I do it it's, you, know, about to you know all about it <laughs> yes. right you can't live with them you can't live without them I know. And that's what it's all about i'm always like it sucks when you're in a fight and then like i you know. need help with your computer it, exactly, <laughs> exactly. I'm like, i am not talking I'm to not you talking uh yeah can you please help me with I know. this same. I'm yeah. like, I'm not talking to him Yes, today. exactly. Oh, the printer broke. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> totally. That's funny. I know. Well, that's good. We, we needed to give him a little credit. I know. Here. I know. No, he is one of my biggest supporters. It's like, I, I even keep on saying with with the TOC, the, the reason... You know, when you have somebody in your corner who is going to tell you the truth, no matter mm-hmm. how much you don't want to hear mm. it, you need those people in your corner Mm -hmm. because a lot of people would be like oh yeah that's fine that's fine right um and i and i do like you know uh, all all of this success all of this has happened pretty much after we got married because you know there's a lot that you can't do alone but but when you're together there there is so much that can be achieved so earlier you had asked me that how do you balance it all i balance it all because i have vivek in my corner Mm -hmm. that's amazing you know my biggest supporter yeah Um, and and of course i mean we we fight We, we both are scorpions and you know we have disagreements but no matter how much you fight in the end of the day you still know that there is a person in your corner yeah. who's going to back you regardless and vice versa. Mm-hmm. How has he handled you being a celebrity? He he is my greatest uh, like, you know, equalizer. Yeah. It is what it is to us. We both take it as a part of a job. Yeah, it is not, you know, it's like it's so funny. Guy, the first time that guy saw Vivek was in Restaurant Hustle. Right. And he's like completely in love with him. Like every time they meet, they are like, who Manit, right? <laughs> so so Vivek has that personality yeah. of like being very, you know, I- endearing to people. But uh, it is like, as I was saying, I'm the louder one. So I get you know <laughs> more makeup and more oxygen. That's that's it. But it's 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 uh, interesting. We just take it like, you know, when we are at home, we yeah. are parents when we are over here, you know, yeah. business. Uh, during COVID, like we were washing dishes, we were, you know, he was running food, I was cooking food. So yeah. th- that's yeah. where we started. And we go back a really long way. We did our undergrad together. So oh, wow. so we've, we've seen each other through the ups and downs mm. and, you know, the lows and the highs and uh, and that's, that's what it awesome. is. It's, it's a friendship and it's it's a, a partnership that works. Yeah, that's it's great. It's a partnership, true yeah. partnership. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, well, I can't end without talking about your James Beard Award of Excellence oh, that yes. you've gotten. That's a huge deal. How did that feel? One of those moments that you pinch yourself yeah. and is this is this really happening? It's it's fantastic. I mean, James Beard is something. It's the Oscars of the food world, and and I I love that. This year, I got to present. Uh, uh, two awards uh, and also introduce, um, you know, like, uh, have you heard of what's that show called? The Bear. The Bear. bear. I the bear. Sure what you're about. Yes, The Bear. Yes. Yes. So I, I got to introduce um, Jeremy Allen White. Yes. So oh, I introduced, did? Did you I introduced meet him? yes, I have a photograph with him. So <gasps> I'm like, yeah, it was like. Lip. I know. I got. <laughs> I got. Uh, I got to introduce him to the stage on the that, James Beard Awards. Do yes. you love that show? It's, um, I haven't watched it. It's so good. I actually haven't watch watched it. it because I'm afraid of how real it's gonna be. Yeah, oh. it might. the fact that we do this on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. So I am. You know, there are, there are a few of the shows that I keep on. I'm like, uh, it might trigger uh, you. <laughs> I know it might. It might trigger me, and I want to watch it, but I'm like, it's going to be one of those grotesque things that you just can't like. Yeah. You're like, oh no! <laughs> I I want to look away, but I just can't look away. So yeah, it is. Uh, so yeah, it's it's been yeah, it's it's been fun. Like the award and presenting and like just to be a part of that conversation is is important because at times there becomes a very distinct line between TV chefs and serious chefs. So mm-hmm. I almost feel excited that I can kind of straddle both mm-hmm. those aspects. And that's what makes it a lot of fun. Well, yeah. congratulations. Yes. Thank you. That's amazing. that's amazing. Well, thank you so much for yes. talking to us. We know thank how busy you. you are and we just appreciate you. You're such a great part of Nashville. And so I just really wanted to have you on. And well, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for saying yes. Fun, fun <laughs> conversation. It was. Okay. I feel like I'm a little bored tonight I feel like I could use some fun I will take over this city, yeah, baby, fun